This video is sponsored by Blue Willow. I bought this for $79, but a robot made it. We're looking at artificial intelligence, the good, the bad, and the unknown. We know, and there are some things we don't know. The challenging thing, the interesting thing is how do we use it to make people better? While AI tech has been around for a while, it feels like there's been an explosion of creative programs and generators that have taken the spotlight here in the last six months. Among those are Midjourney, ChatGPT, Descript, and Blue Willow, who we sat down and interviewed for this video. But there are hundreds of AI programs running around out there that are changing the way we are thinking about the creative process, with the potential to help us significantly in the future with our creative work. But is the advancement and potential worth it? Should we start to implement it in our own work? And what's the most responsible way to do that? And will it lead to AI taking over the world? That's a good question. And you know what? I don't know how I can answer that because uh, once it does become sentient, then there's really no turning back. And I think, are we headed that direction? Well, uh, the more times that we use AI and the more that we train the models, the smarter that it, it becomes. Do I believe that one day it's going to become sentient and start working against us and uh, destroy humanity? Well, no, probably not. We're, we're probably not gonna get to that point, at least not in our lifetimes. There are no strings on me. Blue Willow is an image generator AI program that creates an image based off of command prompts you enter on Discord. Like say, the Batman winning an Oscar for best cinematography. Yeah, you can ask it to make pretty much anything, but how does it work? So the way that our program works, and um, I'm not sure if your, your viewers are familiar with some other AI engines such as uh, Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, et cetera, but when a, a user comes onto a Discord server, they enter a prompt, and the prompt can be a description of an image. It can be any image that they can imagine. And as soon as they enter that prompt, it communicates with our AI model. And our AI model is unique because it aggregates various public open source models. So the most popular of which is uh, Stable Diffusion. So once those uh, prompts have been entered into the model, then it then uh, uses various different models, including our own that we're working on, including a few other smaller open source models. And it provides those images to the end user. And it provides a selection of images based on the prompt that the user selected. So the user is then able to choose which one is the best. And over time, that helps train and improve the model and helps develop which one is ultimately the best that we want to continue research with. If you'd like to try out Blue Willow for yourself, you can right now. It's currently free to use. Click on the link below in the description to sign up to use it today. And after you sign up, you can also add it into your own Discord server like we have for ours. So be sure to share with us what you create with it. But while AI technology is certainly impressive and has room for applications in many fields, it also has a fair share of critics. And that's because it relies on training from the work of humans. In Dolly, the company fed it 600 million labeled pictures from the internet. Dolly was created by training a neural network on images and their text descriptions. Through deep learning, it not only understands individual objects, like koala bears and motorcycles, but learns from relationships between objects. And this raises a lot of questions. If an AI is trained on an artist's work to create a prompt, who should own what result from that? The artist the AI was trained on, the person who wrote the prompt, the creators of the AI? Is AI training similar to a human artist taking inspiration from someone else's work? Or is it just something more calculated and less justifiable? And these aren't just hypothetical questions for the future. These are debates that are happening right now in many communities as many artists, photographers, and other content creators are banding together in protest against their work being used for machine learning, believing that they should have the ultimate say in whether their work is part of this technology or not. Well, sure, I can speak to number one, I can speak to the ethical constraints. Number two, I can speak to uh, the legal side of it as well. I understand that it's controversial. Uh, everyone in this industry understands that AI technology overall is controversial, but we also understand that AI technology is inevitable and that AI technology, whether or not people approve of it and whether or not some artists may or not, may not approve of it, it's inevitable and it is going to change the industry because now it is available to everyone. And so we want to make AI available to people to use so that they can actually improve their art. Uh, now, we work with artists who use our product and they use it to improve the art that they create. Now, the controversial side of that would be that many artists, many freelancers say that AI art is taking away from their creations, is making it too easy, is enabling anyone to be an artist. And to some extent that's true. 
But we are also creating a very useful tool. And any talented artist can use that tool to actually improve their own creations. And they should be aware of the infinite possibilities that AI has to actually help them improve their business, improve their efficiency, and move forward with technological progress rather than working against it. And since all of this new technology, copyright laws haven't really caught up. And that means this whole field is a gray area for now. But we do have a clue as to how battles could go from a unique source. In today's big board, a battle in court like we have never seen before. It's over selfies taken by a monkey. His name is Naruto. The photos went viral after he snapped them with a nature photographer's camera. Meet Naruto the monkey, an amateur photographer from Indonesia and the subject of a seven year long legal battle. In 2008, Naruto met British wildlife photographer David Slater and took a selfie with his camera. In 2011, Slater licensed the picture of Naruto to various publications and ignited a massive copyright dispute based on three different interpretations of copyright laws. The first was that David owned the photos as he created the scenario that brought them into being. The second, that Naruto was the owner and that he should hold the rights. The third, that Naruto was the owner, but since he's a monkey, he can't hold the rights. And so they're in the public domain. From 2011 to 2018, the dispute over these pictures dragged on and on, and ultimately it was decided that the third viewpoint was the strongest. For a work to be copyrighted, it has to be made by a human. It makes no sense to allow a monkey to enforce a copyright suit, but if you're going to do that, it's equally absurd to deny a monkey written notice Naruto wouldn't need written notice. Uh, maybe the other macaque monkeys in Indonesia would. No, that, that's, that's precisely right, Your Honor. This precedent has extended into the world of AI recently with a comic known as Zaria of the Dawn. In September last year, the comic received protected status from US Copyright Office. But only a few months later, they've begun a fight to remove that protection because the comic's artwork was made with Midjourney, a non-human contributor. Now on the legal side, uh, specifically to our product, the, the, the images that people produce on uh, Blue Willow is uh, not necessarily owned by anyone. They can use those images for anything. We encourage YouTube creators, we encourage uh, artists of all kinds to use the technology, create the images, and then do as they wish with them. But while AI art is AI driven, it is still prompted by humans to make that image. And in some cases, it's only a part of the final artwork that is created. And we could go down a rabbit hole here on copyright battles, but after the Fran 8K incident, we're all good on that for a while here. And when someone approaches us and says that AI art is putting people out of business, uh, I don't agree with that because I think that it's actually creating many business opportunities. And it's creating business opportunities for those who are able to capitalize on it. We, we want them to come to the side of realizing that it's a wave of technological progress that is going to help artists not work against them. And those who are opposing it, those who are saying that AI art is ethically wrong, uh, what I would say to them is try the product. Use your talents as an artist because it's not the end game. Like once you create a prompt, once you create an image with Blue Willow or any of our competitors as well, then there's still infinite possibilities to use Photoshop, to use your own artistic cre uh, creativity and your own artistic techniques to enhance that image and change it in a way that you wish with the support of the AI. The last question we wanna address in this video here is the poll we ran on our community page about how people felt about AI driven art that we started to use in our videos. And it was split 50-50. And I think I have a good guess as to why. In combination with it being a very scary new technology, you also have a combination of what has been happening in society lately. We've all been bombarded with fraudulent news and it keeps us on our toes more and more every day, trying to make sure what we're reading is true. We don't like being tricked or led to believe something that isn't true. And AI created art has the potential to be used for good, and it has the potential to be used to confuse people. And to make matters worse, there are not a lot of rules or regulations yet for AI technology and copyright laws have a long way to go to catch up. And even with my more positive attitude towards AI generative art and programs, I still feel I owe our viewers on our channel some transparency when it comes to the way we use AI art in our videos or content. So we've developed an internal AI art guideline for our Frame Voyager channel that you can read through in the link below. This includes adding in our description where AI art is being used in our videos and thumbnails. And this also is the first time we will be giving you all access to our Obsidian database that allows you to view our scripts and all the research we do for each video on our channel. We are still setting it up and adding in all of our content and research, but for each video moving forward, you will have a link that you can go to see the research and information we sourced. But if AI art isn't your thing, be sure to check out this strange history of video game adaptions that all led to The Last of Us.